Taylor Swift is revealing a little bit more about her renowned pen. The 34-year-old singer-songwriter offered exclusive commentary on the Tortured Poets Department, which debuted on iHeartRadio on April 19. He also shared detailed insights behind a number of songs, including as Clara Bow, Fortnite, and more. Swift provided Amazon Music with even more details on the already highly regarded album for its exclusive Tortured Poets Department listening experience, track by track with Taylor Swift. A lot of the songs on the Tortured Poets Department deal with the idea of heartbreak or loss in a metaphor of something else, the artist remarked while introducing the album on iHeartRadio. Swift related the idea of being love-bombed, where someone, you know, rocks your world and dazzles you then kind of abandons you as an alien abduction, where this girl was abducted by aliens but she wanted to stay with them, and then when they like drop her off back in her hometown she's like, where are you going, in down bad, for instance. I had fun there, it was strange yet nice. Please return. I've just been exposed to a whole different galaxy and universe I didn't know was possible. How can you put me somewhere I was before, is how the character in the song stated it. Swift said on Amazon Music that the first song, Fortnite, featuring Post Malone, exhibits a lot of the common themes that run throughout this album, with fatalism, longing, pining away, lost dreams being one of the biggest. It seems like a really fatalistic record, since it has a lot of intensely dramatic words about life and death. I love you, but it's destroying my life, she remarked, these are really dramatic, exaggerated things to say. That kind of album, that's it. She continued, saying, I always imagined that it took place in this, like, American town where the American dream you thought would happen to you didn't, right, in her iHeartRadio commentary. The eerie song Florida, which Swift co-wrote and performed with Florence Welch of Florence and the Machine, is the second guest appearance on the Tortured Poets Department. I think I was coming up with this idea of like, what happens when your life doesn't fit, or your choices you've made catch up to you, and you're surrounded by these harsh consequences and judgment, and circumstances did not lead you to where you thought you'd be, and you just want to escape from everything you've ever known. Is there a place you could go, the Midnight Singer said, reflecting on the jumping-off point she used to write the tune with Welch, 37. I'm always watching shows like Dateline, once they commit these crimes, where do they go right away to avoid the law? They travel to Florida, she remarked. They attempt to change who they are, adopt a new identity, and fit in. And I believe that after experiencing heartbreak, there's a part of you that says, I want a new name, I want a new life, and I don't want anyone to know who I am or where I've been. Swift said to Amazon Music that the album's final song, Clara Bow, is a commentary on what I've seen in the industry that I've been in over time. The song's namesake is an actress from the silent film era. When she was younger, she recalled, I used to sit in record labels trying to get a record deal. You know, you remind us of. Followed by the name of an artist and a form of derogatory remark about her, such as, but you're this, you're so much better in this way or that way. And that's how we instill in women the idea that they could take the place of a woman who has accomplished tremendous things before them. Swift stated that she picked women who have done great things in the past and have been these archetypes of greatness in the entertainment industry when choosing who to name drop in the song that sounds like the lucky one, which includes Stevie Nicks, Bow, and Swift herself. Swift stated that Stevie Nicks is an icon and an incredible example for anyone who wants to write songs and make music, and that Clara Bow was the first it girl. The song Who's Afraid of Little Old Me was inspired by bitterness, as Swift disclosed on Amazon Music's track-by-track -track experience. The song's line, You wouldn't last an hour in the asylum where they raised me, gave rise to the album's first viral meme. Swift claimed that she composed the song by herself, sitting at the piano in one of those moments when I felt bitter about just all the things we as a society and as a culture do to our artists. The Tortured Poets Department has a lot of information about this specific concept, she said. What treatment do we provide our authors, artists, and other creatives? We made them suffer greatly. We observe their work and then pass judgment on it. We enjoy seeing artists in pain, sometimes to the extent that I believe we as a society sometimes cause that pain and then we just watch what transpires. The song My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, as its title suggests, is told from the perspective of a child's toy, according to the artist during the first-ever iHeartRadio commentary.
A lot of us are in relationships where we are so valued by a person in the beginning, and then all of a sudden, they break us or devalue us in their mind. This is the theme of the song, which she wrote alone. It is about being somebody's favorite toy until they break you and then don't want to play with you anymore. We continue to insist on saying no, no, no. I bet you saw them when they first saw me. They'll revisit that. They will return to that. Thus, in a way, it's a song about denial, really, she continued, so that you can live in this environment where a toxic broken relationship may still exist. Now available is the Tortured Poets Department.